The genesis of this video was a viewer's comment. Daniela from London in the UK wrote, I still don't think historians look at the combat effectiveness of the 7th Cavalry. We know there were a lot of new recruits in the ranks, with many from Europe who had not even seen a Native American, let alone fought one. Well, as for seeing Natives, recall that the 7th Cavalry took along 50 Arikara scouts, and there was plenty of interaction with other friendly tribes uh, while they were in garrison. However, was the 7th Cavalry a bunch of raw recruits that had no business being on a battlefield? And what about the number of troopers from Europe, or rather the number of troopers born outside of the United States? I have been wanting to explore this for some time now, as those seem like interesting questions, and I have the data set to explore possible answers. Before we get started, ask yourself the question, what would be a lot, or rather a bunch of, raw recruits? Indeed, what does it mean to be a raw recruit? So think about that. And for context, current initial training for a U.S. Army Cavalry Scout is 22 weeks long. With that in mind, let's take a look at some simple visualizations and you can decide for yourself. Now, I have my opinions on the matter, but that and $10, well, with inflation $12, will get you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. If any of you want the data set I used, which I put together from the friends of the Little Bighorn website, let me know and I can send you the comma delimited file. It is also available for you to download from a website I created, and I'll put a link in the description. With that, let's get cracking. Color Sergeant Bourne, have the viewers stand to. Stand to! This is the data set with the information we need. For each individual, we have the date they entered service. Using that, it is now a trivial task to calculate the number of days they were in the Army as of June 25th, 1876. Three other important variables here are rank, place of birth, and detached. In the analysis, I extracted the country from the place of birth. The variable detached is important because it tells us who was present at the battle. Those on detached service could be on any number of assignments, from confinement to guarding supplies at one of the depots along the Yellowstone River, and everything in between. If we agree to focus the analysis on the experience of the troopers, then we should focus on those only with the rank of private. After selecting only the privates, I dropped two of them that had over 3,000 days of service, as I considered those outliers. Uh, do not be alarmed by that. that. It's standard practice and statistical analysis and machine learning to remove outliers. We then removed those that had assignments as scouts, which is in the variable company. This leaves us with 615 privates. Of them, 427 were present at the battle and 188 were on detached service. Let's visualize this data and see what it tells us. This is a cumulative distribution function plot. Now, do not be alarmed. That is nothing more than a fancy name for simply plotting what percent of something, in this case, the 7th Cavalry Privates, is less than or greater than another value. And of course, our value of interest here is days a private was in the service. Let me explain further, and then we can look at some specific examples. The bottom axis is the days of service. So if you had been in the 7th Cavalry for two years, 730 days, you would be right here. Those troopers with fewer days of service than you are to the left, and those with more days of service than you are to the right. On the left, the y-axis, as it is known, you are keeping track of the ratio of the total number of privates at that point based on days of service. So it will always go from 0 to 1. Notice that the lines are tracking those present at the battle and those on detached service. Now let's apply a practical example. Let's say we want to know what percent of all the privates that were present at the battle and had less than one year of service. We see here that 
for that cohort, roughly 30% had less than one year of duty. But wait, there's more. What would be the middle or the median of private experience? For that, we go to the 0.5 ratio on the y-axis and see that half of the privates on the battlefield had more than 1,000 days of experience. What do you think? Those of you that have served in combat arms units like armor, infantry, artillery, and combat engineers, how does this compare to what you saw? One more thing on soldier experience. During the Reno Court of Inquiry in January of 1879, Sergeant Ferdinand Culbertson, who was in Captain Moylan's A Company, which was in Reno's battalion, testified accordingly. The court recorder, Lieutenant Lee, posed the question, state all that occurred on the skirmish line as it was in the open, how long it remained there, what it did, and where it went. Sergeant Culbertson replied, We remained on the skirmish line firing. Some of the men were firing very fast. Many were new men. A great many men of my own company were new men and were firing fast. I highlighted that wishy-washy qualitative word, many, because everybody's definition of many is different. Also, what does firing fast mean? Isn't it a mission essential task of a non-commissioned officer to maintain fire discipline? Look to your front. Mark your target when you come. Mark your target. Look to your front. The data tells us that, on average, a company had 859 days of service, but more compelling is the median. Half of the privates in Culbertson's company had less than 571 days in service versus 1,000 days for the rest of the 7th. So this seems to support his testimony. How about that? With a simple visualization and a couple of measures of central tendency, we have quantitative support for a qualitative statement made in the 19th century. Now, as for the percentage of the privates present on the battlefield that were born outside of the United States, we can look at a bar chart of the number of privates by country of birth. We see that 245 were born in the United States, which is roughly 58%, followed by Irish-born and German-born. What do you think? But we don't want the Irish. <laughs> Let me close this section out by saying that if you have historical data and would like assistance or guidance in analyzing it, let me know. Uh, for example, here's an interactive map I created of documented airstrikes in support of the fight at LZ X-Ray in November of 1965, and I used the, the so-called THOR data set, which stands for Theater History of Operations. I created a similar interactive map in this video on the channel, which you will find in the World War II playlist. And, and speaking of World War II, my Battle of the Bulge trip is on, and I have airplane tickets in hand. If all goes according to plan, on 16 December, on the 78th anniversary of the battle, at 0730 hours local, I will be standing at this marker just to the north of Lanzenroth, Belgium. This will be the start of eight days of filming the battlefield from one end to the other. This series on the bulge will uncover the desperate struggle of the Battle of the Bulge like you have never seen before from a strategic, operational, and tactical perspective. Hell, I even started to work on a cinematic intro. Have a look, and we will see you soon. It's no fun to say to men that you love, go out, go out and get killed. And we've had to say it. And by God, they have gone.
and they have won. But I want you to remember that the sacrifice that these men have made must not be in vain.